In the previous videos, we went over the basics of CSS and how you can use standard CSS properties to lay out your pages and format your text. In this video, we're going to take things a step further and introduce the Paged Media module. The Paged Media module is a new part of CSS3 that adds some extra functionality specifically targeted at making print objects like books and magazines. You can do basic stuff like customize the size of the page and also add running headers and footers and page numbers and other kinds of dynamic text that we'll get to in the next video. For now, let's jump into the basics of Paged Media. As I said, the Paged Media module is a new part of CSS3 and it adds some extra things specifically targeted at making print objects like books. Hopefully you'll recall that back in a previous video we talked about the CSS box model. When you're working with paged media, pages are treated like big boxes and every page in your document is like one big block element that has a margin area, a border area, a padding area, and a content area. You can define these areas with the page rule. The page rule is the crux of paged media. Don't worry too much about what this code block is saying right now. The main thing we're looking at is the at page selector here, which is what we use to set up the general layout of a page. This is where you can define the size of your pages, whether they should have running headers and footers, how big the margins should be, and any other basic page layout specs. This is similar to the concept of master pages in page layout programs like InDesign. A master page is a layout template that is used for groups of pages in your document that determines where the actual book content should appear and adds any extra elements that should be consistent across all your pages. You can define master page rules for every page in your document or only for certain kinds of pages like right-hand pages or only the pages in a chapter. When you're working with master pages in CSS, you can also use the cascade to layer multiple page rules. Defining properties that should be consistent in the entire book in some global rules. And then adding more specific master pages as needed to target only certain kinds of pages. I'm going to jump over to O'Reilly Atlas, which is where I've got my source HTML and I can also write my CSS here too and then just build from this platform to show you the rendered PDF result. I've already got my CSS file open here, ready for me to start adding some page rules. The first thing you want to do is set the trim size of your page, which means the dimensions of the page. To do that, you have to first set up a page rule. Generally, the trim size of a book is the same on every single page, so it makes sense to define this inside a global page rule, as I'm doing here. You then add the size property, and then the width of the page, immediately followed by the height of the page. I'm going to make my pages 6 inches by 9 inches. I'm also going to go ahead and add a top and bottom margin to every page. Lots of books have mirrored margins on the left-hand pages and right-hand pages, so that the content always shows up in the same spot relative to the spine of the book. To do this, you need to set different values for your left and right margins on the left and right facing pages. I already have those defined, so I'm just going to paste them in. Let's walk through this code. You can see here that I'm using something called a pseudo class. These are extra little page rules that narrow down what kinds of pages your rules will apply to, like only left-hand pages or only right-hand pages. These page rules will pick up the definition from our generic page rule here, and then build on that with their left and right margin settings. In addition to left and right pseudoclasses, there's also a first pseudoclass that you can use to add special formatting for just the first page of your document. You can also customize your chapters even further 
so that, for example, the layout of every chapter is different from the layout of the rest of the book, like your title page and your copyright page and your table of contents. You can do this by creating named pages. Named pages are custom master pages that you can apply to any element that you want. And then those page rules will only apply to those elements. Creating a named page is really easy once you know how to set up a page rule. You just start adding a new page rule and then immediately follow that with a name for your named page. This can be anything you make up. I'm going to call mine chapter because I'll be using it in my regular text chapters. As usual, you should try and make sure you pick something descriptive for your name. Now just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to give all my chapter pages a light gray background color. I'd never actually do this for a regular novel. Then, to apply that page to an element, you use the page property, like this. So to walk through what I just pasted, I'm selecting sections that have an attribute of data type with a value of chapter. So remember, we talked about these attribute selectors back in an earlier video. Then, to apply the master page, I just use the page property, and I specify which master page I want to use. You only need to specify the page property if you want to use a custom named page. If you just have generic page rules, those will automatically be applied. Now let's build a PDF and look at the end result so far. We've got our 6 by 9 trim size, and if you page through to the chapters, you can see there's our light gray background applied only to this section. It's still pretty ugly and our text is kind of a mess, but this is a good start on defining our master pages. You can also add extra content to your master pages that will then show up on every page in your document that uses that master page. This is really useful for adding things like running headers and footers, like if you want to have the book title or chapter title repeated on every page. CSS3 actually adds some extra pieces to the margins of pages just to help you do this. The margin area of each page is actually split up into 16 individual boxes, each of which can be formatted differently. You can then add your running headers or page numbers in these margin areas on your master pages in precisely the position you want, and this extra content will show up on every page. The page's padding area then controls the space between the content of these 16 margin areas and the actual page content. And then you've still got the border area in between if you want to use it. You can style each margin subdivision completely differently. And each of the 16 margin subdivisions actually has a box model of its own. This means that each individual margin subdivision can have its own margin, which separates it from the surrounding margin areas, as well as a border, padding, and content. You can then define how these areas should look and add content to them using your page rules. Each margin area has a specific selector that follows this pattern. The first part of the selector name says which edge it's on, the top, bottom, left, or right. Then you specify where on the edge it lies, on the left, on the right, in the corner, and so on. So for example, some of the margin areas are top left corner, or top right corner, or top center. You can also do left top and left bottom, and so on. And you then use that selector to define your margin areas inside an existing page rule. Let's hop back over to Atlas and see this in action. Here I've got some CSS already started to help us out. You can see inside this page left page rule, I have another nested rule for the top left margin area. I can then go ahead and add my properties and values inside that nested rule, and they'll only apply to that specific margin area and none of the other margin areas of the page. 
Let's take a closer look at this example and build on it to create some custom running headers for our left and right pages. First, I've defined my global master page. We can see our same size definition and our top and bottom margins. I know that I want to add a running header to every page, though I want the running header to be aligned slightly differently depending on whether it goes on a left page or a right page. However, I know that the running headers on both kinds of pages should always be followed by a border, with a little bit of extra padding to separate that border from the actual content of the page. I went ahead and added that border to the top of every page, as well as that padding. Now we'll move on to setting up our left and right hand pages. I want my running headers to show up on the left edge for left hand pages, and then on the right edge for right hand pages. So instead of adding my margin area rules to this global page rule, I'm going to add new page rules for my left and right pages using the left and right pseudo classes. I'll add the left hand page running headers to the top left margin area, and then I'll add the right hand page running headers to the top right margin area. To keep it simple, I'm just going to use the book title for my running headers for now. To do so, you just add the title inside the content property. If I were adding running footers instead, then I'd add this to the bottom left margin area. I like running headers better though, so I'm going to keep it in the top. Next, to make sure that my running header is flush with the left edge of the page, I'm going to add a text alignment property and set that to left. Finally, I'm going to add a vertical alignment property. This determines where vertically inside the box my text will appear. You can set it either to top, middle, or bottom. I want my text to appear at the bottom most edge of my margin area. Now I'm just going to mirror what I did here for my right hand pages. I'll copy those properties and paste them in. I want to change my text align property to the right so that my running headers on the right hand pages are always flush with the right edge. Let's take a look at the final result. As we scroll through to our chapters, you can see on the left-hand pages we've got a running header with the book title, and it's aligned to the left. And then on our right-hand pages we have that same running header aligned to the right. It's just what we wanted. One important thing to remember about the 16 margin areas is that only four of them have fixed dimensions, and those are the four corners. The rest of the margin areas have just one fixed dimension and one variable dimension. Let's take a look at this example. Here we've given our page a 0.75 inch margin on the top and bottom, and then a half inch margin on the left and right. The dimensions of our margin areas would then be as follows. All of the margin areas on the left and right edges have a fixed width of 0.5 inches. All of the margin areas on the top and bottom edges have a fixed height of 0.75 inches. The corners fall under the jurisdiction of both the vertical edge and the horizontal edge, which means that they have both a fixed width and a fixed height. All the rest of the margin areas have only one fixed dimension, and the other dimension varies depending on what's inside the margin area that variable dimension is going to try and fill as much space as it can. So if only one margin area has content defined, that margin area will actually spread to fill the space occupied by both of its neighbors until it hits the corner. Let's take a look at another example. I'm going to go ahead and add to our left hand page rule just to show you how this works. First, let's give our top left margin area a background color, so it'll be really easy to see the results. 
Now, if we build this PDF and then scroll down to a left-hand page, you can see that even though we only defined the content for that one margin area, it has spread out to take up the entire top margin. That's because there were no other margin areas defined. So this margin area is just going to go ahead and take up as much space as it possibly can. If we go back to our CSS, let's add a definition for another margin area. Let's do the top right. We'll go ahead and add some content, but slightly less content than we added to the top left margin. We'll add a background color as well to make it really obvious what's happening. Now let's check out the PDF. And here's our finished result. We'll scroll down to that left page, and you can see that the center margin area has been completely overtaken by our left and right margin areas. And because the left margin area has more content inside of it, it spreads out to fill more space than the right margin area. Margin area sizing can get a little complicated when you're adding a lot of extra content to your margins. So I encourage you to check out the full specification on the w3.org website here. That should give you a good sense for how to use the paged media module to set up your pages, add master pages, and add things like running headers and footers. In the next video, we'll dive into some more advanced topics around how to add dynamic running headers and footers and automated page numbers using generated content.